Recently, we covered the incredible reports made by a Russian known as Mr. Kasatskin, deep within a coal mine in Rostov. Dated at over 300 million years old, it is these types of finds which are often suppressed from the public. It's seen by some as an imperative task to conceal such information, and this next object is no less fascinating or controversial. Dated as being a mere 50 million years younger than our prints deep within the mine, another artifact, thankfully exposed to the world. The stone, with a mysterious apparent chip embedded within its form, was discovered accidentally by local fisherman Viktor Morozov in Labinsk, a town in Krasnodar Krai. Understandably perplexed by this marvelous find, he quietly notified local university professors regarding his intriguing discovery. After donating the stone to these said professionals, it was discovered that the strange alien object embedded within this pebble is indeed a processing microchip of a clearly unknown origin. Amazingly, it has also been found to still contain processing data which has not yet been deciphered, which when captured and translated could quite possibly shed light on a once existing advanced civilization here on Earth. Or more, it could also, in all possibility, give us a tiny glimpse at an ancient alien civilization who are at this time possible candidates as the creators of this advanced and very ancient chip. The team began to discuss the confusing artifact with other professionals within similar fields of study, and predictably, it was not long until debunking efforts engulfed the investigations. A number of prominent figures coming forth to passionately denounce such research being made public or indeed being undertaken, with explanations of it somehow only being a mere fossil subsequently being publicly launched, the stone catalogued as such by the majority of the trusting public. This clearly in staunch rejection of reality. The fragment of a once larger microchip contains information we are yet to extract and decipher information of clearly ancient and possibly alien origin. We just hope the specialists bestowed with the task of this important research, now convinced they have discovered that which will eventually rewrite the history books, do not discover that the object has disappeared without trace, a fate suffered by many other artifacts stumbled upon within our modern age, artifacts of an unexplained or otherworldly nature. Just who or what could have created this chip? What was its purpose? We will endeavor to keep an eye on this research. Many inventions found throughout the world have their origins set in the Far East. Many machines that different nations claim as their own can often be found to have primitive traces of development many centuries earlier within China. And our next artifact is no exception. Dating back over 2,000 years, this rare and enigmatic piece of once very high technology can only be seen as a demonstration of their superior ingenuity. It seems the invention of the first seismoscope can be traced back to 132 AD, when a Chinese inventor called Chang Heng perfected a device remarkably accurate at detecting earthquakes, even from afar. Although the ancient Chinese did not fully understand the cause of earthquakes, they did see it as very important to keep track of such events, perceiving these disturbances with cosmic yin and yang. It was, therefore, important for the Chinese emperor to be alerted of any earthquakes occurring anywhere in their kingdom. Chang's ingenious seismoscope was almost six feet across and made of solid bronze, decorated with eight dragons marking compass directions. Within each dragon's mouth was a small bronze ball, and beneath sat eight bronze toads. A mechanism within would somehow detect an earthquake occurring in the distance. This would then cause a ball to drop out of one of the eight dragon's mouths. What is fascinating regarding Chang's invention is the fact that no one seems to be able to figure out for a certainty how it worked. One theory is that a thin stick set loosely down the center of the barrel. When an earthquake occurred, a stick would topple over in the direction of the seismic shock. According to legend, when Chang first showed his invention to the emperor, it indicated that a quake had occurred to the west of Luyang, the capital city at the time. A few days later, a messenger from the region arrived reporting that there had indeed been an earthquake there, around the time Chang's machine had indicated. 
when specialists first realized what the machine was, they struggled to believe that this 2,000-year-old invention could actually work. So, in 2005, scientists in Zhenzhou, China used it to detect several earthquakes. The seismoscope detected all of them. In fact, the data gathered from this 2,000-year-old machine corresponded with that gathered by modern-day seismometers. A marvelous machine left to us by a once ingenious civilization. The most ancient sites to be found here upon our planet were often created using enormous, erosion-resistant megalithic stones. This use of enormous stone being the reason why many of these structures have indeed survived the eons. And, although the actual methods used to move such stones has been lost to history, their existence, and indeed their placement, remains a testament to our lost ancestors' past capabilities. According to modern science, or more specifically, the known laws of physics, many of these stone blocks defy understanding. And although little is known regarding the true builders of such sites, places such as Puma Punku still possesses many megalithic blocks, which display the extraordinarily advanced, astonishing feats of block building and precision carving, which we believe were left by a people who flourished an incredibly long time ago. Enormous, precision carved, precisely placed andesite blocks still litter the site. Their existence is undeniable, yet highly controversial. Therefore, predictably, many of these sites are either quietly investigated or simply ignored, successfully concealing unexplained feats of past engineering. Some of the most visited sites on Earth contain megalith blocks walked past or over without a second thought every day. These stones, however, hold the secret to unraveling the currently attested historical inaccuracies, for they do indeed exist, cannot be shifted, and fly in the face of the incomplete history academics are attempting to teach as fact. These same individuals simply fall silent when asked to explain how their currently attested builders of said sites, be it Roman, Inca, Mayan, Egyptian, etc., actually built such structures using such enormous blocks. Additionally, regardless of these said individuals' apparent qualification to speak on such matters, when one presents any compelling evidence, such as erosion patterns, machine tool marks, highly advanced building techniques, be it anything solid which indicates a far more superior, far older civilization as the true constructors, their lack of true knowledge regarding their apparent specialist subjects always becomes apparent. Additionally, these selected, submissive, often subsequently authoritatively placed individuals have never had the experience to explore such controversial evidence, or indeed, the indicative possibilities attached thereof. This means that, although their knowledge of permitted history is substantial, their overall knowledge regarding the past, and indeed its possible past inhabitants, will always be severely limited. Yet, fortunately, although it may sometimes feel like an eternal battle, in the end, the truth is always found. There are a considerable number of ancient anomalies located within Egypt. These ancient feats of engineering litter sites and the quarries the stones were sourced and shaped at. And although many of you would have heard of Aswan Quarry, Elephantine may be a less familiar location to you, and for good reason. Not only are the pyramids one of the most perplexing, near-perfectly constructed, and as yet unexplained ancient architectural accomplishments on Earth, but how an ancient civilization, supposedly placed within permitted known archaeological history, accomplished such a feat, or indeed why? What was their original purpose? Academic contradiction, a severe lack of anomalous artifacts explored, never mentioned or somehow conveniently go unnoticed. However, in the real world, beyond the boundaries of the fenced or so-called schools of education, thanks to our own work and the presentation of such a volume of inexplicable events artifacts, 
ruins or megaliths, along with many others allied within similar fields, independently funded researchers, investigative agents, and many more sometimes even noticed first by a viewer credited with its rediscovery within our coverage. Thanks to all this movement working to expose such enigmas, has meant that not only are these incredible characteristics now being documented, mentioned, popularized, photographed and studied more and more each day, now being recognized by more and more critically thinking individuals individually finding evidence of lost technologies that had until then either been undiscovered or deliberately overlooked by the funded academic. The vast catalog of unexplained architecture, again growing by the day, but also the often accompanying curious stone cuts, scars and striations, all clearly left by high-speed disc-cutting machine, a signature tool mark, identical to that which is left by modern-day power tools, along with the still absent demonstration of the methods used to construct the pyramids, leads anyone to this ongoing and seemingly most controversial of arguments regarding the origins of the ruins found across Egypt. The Colossus of Memnon, each one weighing far over 1,000 tons, would sing every morning an amazing ability we have covered in a previous video, a curious characteristic reported all the way up until the Roman era. We also covered the thick layer of sea salt once found coating the pyramid's ground and underground caverns, along with a water line reported at around 40 meters up their sides, still visible during the Spanish invasion. This clearly suggests that the pyramids and their accompanying sphinx are in reality so old they even had once been submerged in ocean waters. An ancient ocean which over the eons has shifted, leaving behind sediment in the form of the desert sands. There are many enormous ancient megalithic stones hidden in and around the three great pyramids of Egypt. Not only are there enormous ancient stones virtually hidden in plain sight, thus although walked across, largely overlooked hardly ever mentioned, and never explained in regards to their transport and placement, as modern academia will never be able to provide a logical, sound explanation for these feats. The casing stones, an area of interest we have explored and documented, not only displayed vastly different ages, but also construction methods and types of stones sourced and used. Ultimately, undeniable proof of efforts to preserve the outer stones of these incredible ancient pyramids later on within their history. Signature tool marks, unique features such as protuberances, masonry shapes, polygonal stonewalling, and many other features which we have discovered during our explanations into the relics of lost antiquity. Yet Egypt's most intriguing assets and we feel the most baffling relics which all alternative historians should have within their debacle armory are undoubtedly to be found within the once abruptly abandoned quarries. The unfinished obelisk found at Aswan, being one such relic, the most well-known of these incredible stones by a long way, not only is the obelisk over 1,000 tons, but also due to the identifiable scoop-like tool marks left upon its granite sides, a signature scarring, which again we have so far found, explored and shared this marking at many other ancient sites around the world. Who were the original builders of the Great Pyramids? Were they the same group that quarries Aswan? What tools did these people use to cut many of the relics still left at the Elephantine Island Quarry? How can anyone gaze upon such precision stonework and not ponder how did he accomplish such an incredible finish with such hard stone, with such soft chisels and those made of copper? Not only do we find the currently attested tale of events vastly incomplete, but in many ways virtually impossible. Predictably, we are often confronted with an illogical explanation as to the origins of many unexplainable ruins. Yet Egypt, in particular Aswan and Giza, were clearly the work of a group capable of working and building with 1,000 ton plus stones. With columns of pink Aswan granite, weighing over 14 tons each, over 10,000 kilometers to Baalbek. 
Is this connection mere coincidence? Or are the builders of said sites connected somehow? Possibly one and the same? Questions we get closer to answering every day. We find it highly compelling. The most ancient sites to be found here upon our planet were often created using enormous, erosion-resistant megalithic stones. This use of enormous stone being the reason why many of these structures have indeed survived the eons. And, although the actual methods used to move such stones has been lost to history, their existence, and indeed their placement, remains a testament to our lost ancestors' past capabilities. According to modern science, or more specifically, the known laws of physics, many of these stone blocks defy understanding. And although little is known regarding the true builders of such sites, places such as Puma Punku still possesses many megalithic blocks, which display the extraordinarily advanced, astonishing feats of block building and precision carving, which we believe were left by a people who flourished an incredibly long time ago. Enormous, precision carved, precisely placed andesite blocks still litter the site. Their existence is undeniable, yet highly controversial. Therefore, predictably, many of these sites are either quietly investigated or simply ignored, successfully concealing unexplained feats of past engineering. Some of the most visited sites on Earth contain megalith blocks walked past or over without a second thought every day. These stones, however, hold the secret to unraveling the currently attested historical inaccuracies, for they do indeed exist, cannot be shifted, and fly in the face of the incomplete history academics are attempting to teach as fact. These same individuals simply fall silent when asked to explain how their currently attested builders of said sites, be it Roman, Inca, Mayan, Egyptian, etc., actually built such structures using such enormous blocks. Additionally, regardless of these said individuals' apparent qualification to speak on such matters, when one presents any compelling evidence, such as erosion patterns, machine tool marks, highly advanced building techniques, be it anything solid which indicates a far more superior, far older civilization as the true constructors, their lack of true knowledge regarding their apparent specialist subjects always becomes apparent. Additionally, these selected, submissive, often subsequently authoritatively placed individuals have never had the experience to explore such controversial evidence or indeed, the indicative possibilities attached thereof. This means that, although their knowledge of permitted history is substantial, their overall knowledge regarding the past, and indeed, its possible past inhabitants, will always be severely limited. Yet, fortunately, although it may sometimes feel like an eternal battle, in the end, the truth is always found.